morning. Today it's all about the top lambs. Boy, have we got some top lambs. Every year, we end up with a few top lambs, a couple of rigs that just got one testicle left up. And we usually just run a few separate ones down round, but this time, ah, it's got millions. We've literally got 50, I reckon, maybe more. And today, I'm taking them to a bit of wheat for them to graze. And then I don't know what we're gonna do with them. But I'm gonna show you them. Ta-da! Some here I like to keep them separate from my ewe lambs because otherwise they do their thing and then you end up with a load of ewe lambs in lamb which isn't ideal. So you're going to go and graze some wheat. We haven't got a lot of that and uh, the farmer wants to spray that off in about January. We're the first week of November now. If we can get them, leave them there until January, I'll be really happy. Really happy. And then I just need to find somewhere else for them. This is like my life. Anything? Let's crack on. I need three gates. <laughs> Tap lambs grow quite well because of the testosterone. They grow a lot better. Some of them are big, we should have them away soon, really. So we have arrived. This is what you call wheat volunteers. When the combine combines the wheat, it knocks some of the seeds out of the heads and it's self-sown, so it seeds itself here. There isn't a great deal of it, but we didn't have a lot of options when I said yes, so we will take it. We just done a small area so that they'd get used to eating the wheat because they'd never eaten it before and they'll rather eat grass or something they're used to eating. When they get into it, they love it. It's really, really good for them, but they haven't eaten it before, so it might just take them a sec. We're just gonna graze them on this little section, this little field here, and then they've got all of that. And then we've got another field of it over the road. I've gone for a free strand. Dun, dun, dun. Usually I just do two, but when lambs have never been on electric before, I always do three, because it just, it's that extra line of defense. At the end of the day, it's just a piece of wire. If they want to run through it and break it, they will. I use the wire when I'm training lambs as well, rather than the poly stuff, because it it conducts better. Gives you a sharper shock. Well, I don't think they're even gonna last on this bit of wheat, so what we'll have to do is let them out here now, and then uh, get fencing. But I've actually run out of fence at the moment, because I've got so much out. I haven't got a lot around, so I'm just waiting on some to turn up. Wrapper, get a move on. Oh, I only held it last night, but whatever. Right, guys, please be good to me. I love that site. If you're uh, just getting involved in electric fencing, these little yellow testers are amazing. A friend told me about one of these, I highly recommend. We've had it three years, never changed the battery in it or anything. That's a solid wire. They'll soon learn if they touch that. I've got another 27 to bring, but I think I'm gonna take a couple of them home because I've got these little wild bred sheep and I just I don't fancy them behind the electric fence. Right, for the next mission, we've got uh, 108 ewes here, plus two taps. Looking really well, but look at all this. See down there where Slavy is, see all the water, look. We're all underwater, big paddles in every field. If you had said to me we'll be underwater in November and you'd still be in shorts, well, I'd probably believe the shorts bit back in the summer, but man, we've had some rain last little while. I swore I'd never moan about the rain again, so I'm not gonna. But basically, most of that will be underwater now over the winter. But the guys that own this are absolute legends. They've also got a fairly a fairly big lump of arable, a couple hundred acres. A lot of it's in schemes, so you don't actually have to farm it. I think it's called AB13. You plant it for three years, it's clover, vetch, ryegrass, all stuff that's so good for grazing animals. But you're not allowed to graze it. I wish I could just grab Defra and shake them, because what is the point in that? Some of these things you plant for a couple of years and you can't farm it. We're not producing any, any food off of it at all. And it's perfectly good enough for grazing, but they want you to mow it with a tractor instead. So a guy's got to go out there in a dirty great big tractor, chugging loads of diesel and fossil fuels in the atmosphere, when we could literally be grazing it, the sheep could be passing it through the other end, improving our soils, producing food, keeping me in a job. Just, honestly, the people at Defra, I could, I could shake you. Anywho, luckily these guys have got us a special dispensation. Basically, um, they've been allowed to graze it until New Year's Eve. So we now have about, I don't know how many acres there is. 
maybe 40 acres of it. So what we're gonna do is try and save this end of the field. We're gonna try and save this until after we finish the AB15, whatever it's called. We're just trying to manage it a little bit, but the only problem is it takes electric fencing. So I'm moving these now onto an electric fence, and then we're gonna dot them around over the next few weeks. This is kind of how we live our lives at the moment. Part of the reason I wanna go and get a proper farm tenancy because we didn't know this was gonna happen until, well, we just didn't know it was gonna happen. I didn't even have this land until about a month ago. I didn't even know these people, and now they've come up with the goods. We'll be able to winter 110 ewes, and they're only 10 minutes from home. But we're constantly doing that every year, and it's like, you're just living in constant anxiety. But it's quite funny, I was talking to one of the guys that come shearing for us, and he said, you never get the land and then go and buy the sheep. He's like, you always end up with too many sheep, not having anywhere to do, and then the land comes along. And he's absolutely right. So shout out to Freddie. Um, I don't think they're gonna come across that. Fun fact about sheep, they hate water. I think it's like a, just the way they're wired because they're worried something in there is gonna eat them. They're worried a predator's hiding in the water. Getting sheep across water, not very easy. I'm also a gate, I say that, look at her. What a ledge, straight through the water. She doesn't care one bit. Come on, girls. Really annoyingly, we were a gate short, so I'm having to use the trailer. But, yeah. Mate, you're legend. Well, don't you knocking each other back? So you're only just in lamb. Probably just throw the dog over there and get the others through. Don't really know why they did that. Probably he's gonna take him through that gate because there's no water at that gate. Probably save us a bit of grief, wouldn't it? Probably shouldn't have so many mules in our system because they're very hungry sheep. They eat an awful lot. I like them, so never mind. I knew grazing. I know what you're thinking. Why are you grazing that? But it's actually very good underneath. It's all just, well, at the moment it's all lakes, but it's just ryegrass and clover, a bit of plantain, vetch in there. It's actually very good. It's all good, baby. Right, we just got to get the ewes in here now. Um, no, I don't, but I'm hoping they will. I mean, it didn't rain all summer, and then the last few days, we've had about five inches of rain. I need to change the rattle on the tops. It's gonna be so grim. I got to put my overalls on. Oh man, this is fun, isn't it? Where did this even come from? By this point, the rain was making the GoPro not enjoy life, so I missed filming loads of stuff and we skipped right to where we got the second lot of tap lambs in. I think the audio is probably mullered, but... Little tap lambs to go and join the others. We can do that before it gets dark. Right, I really didn't want to put those guys. A little while ago on another YouTube video, I said, can you guess the breed? They're actually Manx Lothians cross bluebells. In case anyone still cared. I didn't really want to put them behind a fence, but... I think I'm gonna. 
Yeah, I think we're gonna do it. Why not? It's a tough old day, that. Morning, folks. It's the next morning. So, sheep stayed in last night. Although it does look like a face fence has broken down there. The rain absolutely mullered my GoPro last night, so I couldn't film the rest. But that's it. Basically, our lambs are now on some wheat. This wheat will be sprayed off in January, February time, and then some spring barley is going to be planted. So, we get a whole couple of months on this, grazing this. Great grub. I wish more arable farmers were up for doing this sort of stuff because the sheep eat it, pass it out the other end, improve their soil. It's all good things and it gives someone like me who's trying to get into the industry a chance to get going a bit more land because so much land's taken up by arable farms, especially around us. Gives us a chance to be able to do a bit of this. So anyway, really hope you enjoyed my YouTube. Thanks for watching.